Does the government work for us or do we work for the government? Tonight, in whose hands will you trust your freedom? As you know, Freedom Watch has followed closely the debates within the Republican Party over the proper role of the federal government in our lives today. Last night's presidential debate, even though CNN mysteriously excluded former New Mexico Governor Gary Johnson, was an example of what has become of the party in the past 10 years and where it is likely to go in the next 10. We can start with the premise, articulated nicely by former Massachusetts Governor Mitt Romney, that any of the Republican candidates would be a far better president for freedom than President Obama has been. That's a fairly safe argument to make to a largely Republican audience. And the president has helped that argument along by his policies and his recent personal behavior. His policies have tried to instill more government regulation of our lives than any president in history. Even FDR, who openly mocked the Constitution he swore to uphold, did not seek to use the government to force all persons in America to purchase a product they might not want or need, such as health care insurance. And though President Obama boasted that this summer would be the summer of recovery, his prediction is not coming to pass. Every month now, the economy in the United States loses more jobs than it created. The Obama administration keeps borrowing and spending at record paces. One in ten American adults is out of work. One in seven Americans is on food stamps. Half of Americans receive some sort of benefit from the government, and all that is paid for by the other half. And baby boomers are entering Social Security and Medicare at the rate of 10,000 persons a day. Is this the president's fault? Well, in some measure it is. He has advanced the regulatory state, enhanced dependency on government, and radically increased both corporate and individual welfare. And yesterday, when asked if some of the hundreds of billions of dollars that he borrowed in your name and gave away last year did not meet their intended targets, he laughed and said that some shovel-ready jobs were not exactly ready for shovels. That's what happens when government consumes your money without a happy result. It laughs. Now, which of the Republicans last night would most be the dramatic break from President Obama? Well, all but one argued that the government can restrict your choice of a marriage partner. All but one want to keep the military busy in the Middle East, even though we have done whatever we went to Iraq to do, and even though bin Laden is dead. All but one think it is the job of the federal government to stimulate the economy through fiscal and monetary policies. And all but one want, to keep, want the feds to keep paying for Medicare, even though it is a Ponzi scheme that's going bankrupt. The differences among the six are the degrees to which they'd use the government to interfere with your free choices. Of the Republicans now running, only Congressman Ron Paul and Governor Gary Johnson would get the government out of your lives and shrink it down to the confines of the Constitution. In fact, Congressman Paul started this debate about 30 years ago. Now, because of his persistent and patient explanations of the virtues of free choices over government mandates, Voters have an understanding that a planned economy produces prosperity only for the planners and not for the rest of us. Voters now know that when the Federal Reserve prints cash and ships the cash to the Treasury Department, the true buying power of the money we already have goes down. Voters understand that we don't need and can't afford 900 permanent military installations around the world. And they realize that when the government spies on us or the FBI goes through your trash without any evidence of wrongdoing, we are less free and not any safer. As Governor Romney said, any of those Republicans on stage last night would be far superior to the president we now have. But you know that only one has moved the debate from how much the government should interfere with our free choices to whether the government should interfere at all. That one is Ron Paul. And that's the debate we need to have. Because when folks compare government commands to free choices, freedom wins. Tomorrow on Freedom Watch, South Carolina Republican Senator Jim DeMint. How do we